Okay, all ready to keep going then. constant temperature formula because temperature doesn't change and the phase change. Now remember, this is your, your own instructor's test and he wouldn't let you use a calculator, so yeah. that's what practice that way. Now, I think he wants an exact answer. So probably the best thing is to avoid scientific notation and just do the division. So let's just do the long division without scientific notation. Okay. <laughs> so. Right, now there's one simplification that we can make. Yeah. Cross out of zero. Mm -hmm. Good. So we might as well make a simple simplification and cancel out zeros. Times does 35 go into 4? Well, it doesn't. Uh -huh. But does 35 go into 40? Yes. So I think maybe we're thinking about the 400. Yeah. If it's not with the 40, how many times does it go into 40? Once. That's right. Yeah, that's what your instructor did. So then we can just approximate this, basically. So what's this going to come out to be approximately? Um, 1.14. Or 0, sorry. Um, 0 0.01. I guess 0.011. I'm not sure where you're getting the point zero. I don't know where I am either. I'm a little confused. Now remember, the decimal point is all the way over here. Yeah. So there's no decimal point over here on the left. That's right. So we can just start putting in some zeros here to be approximate. Uh -huh. But the decimal point is going to be over here, because that's where the decimal point and the number we're dividing into is. And ultimately, your instructor rounded that off to 11,000, two digits. Okay. So we could, I'll leave that as 11,000. So we're about ready to say what our answer is. Uh, so what is our answer to part B? So delta S is equal to 11,400 um, per 
Now let's follow the advice from the first part and take care with the signs. Should that be positive or negative? Uh, negative, I guess. Yeah, there's yeah. a couple ways to see that. How do we yeah. know it's negative? Because the Q is negative. Yeah, so in fact, we didn't write this the best way that we could have over here. We probably should have put in a negative sign. Mm -hmm. In this formula, I didn't put in the dot. So the point is, this formula will give you the right sign automatically. If you put in the right sign for Q, it'll give you the right sign for delta S. We talked about that when we wrote the formula down in the first place. We talked about how a positive Q, you would expect to go with a positive delta S, and the negative Q would go with a negative delta S. So here we ended up with the negative 11,000 joules per Kelvin. But let's just check that based on our common sense. Would we expect this to be an increase or decrease of disorder? Yeah, and in particular, it's turning from a gas into a liquid. Yeah. Well, liquids are much more orderly. Gas particles are flying around all over the place, whereas in the liquid, they're, um, they, they're not flying around nearly as much. Uh, in fact, the word gas, I believe, comes from the word for chaos, because scientists were in, impressed by how chaotic and disorderly it was. Okay. So we're definitely moving in the direction of having less disorder. So you can see again how it would be easy to lose some credit we, that we deserved here for not thinking about the signs. You want to make a note to yourself to always worry about the signs for entropy. And besides getting the sign mathematically, it's always good to just ask, does this sign make common sense? In fact, it's probably easier to figure out whether entropy is increasing or decreasing just based on your common sense here than just to rely on the math. All right, well, this is the method that we already had sketched out earlier. We talked about how to find entropy changes for phase changes. You use this to find the entropy change for, uh, you use this to find the heat and then you can use the constant temperature formula. There, there's one minor little detail here again that your instructor might expect you to know. Uh, technically, the actual process here was not reversible because the heat was moving into the snow. Well, it, it makes sense for heat to move into snow. It wouldn't make sense, though, for the heat to, uh, to suddenly move out of the snow and into the steam to go from here to here. So this was a irreversible process. However, we can still use this formula because we can imagine a reversible process that is the, the same thing. We can imagine, instead of using snow, imagine using water that's almost at 77 degrees Celsius and having it take the heat out. Well, that's a form, that would be a process that would be very close to going in the opposite direction because then you'd have two things that are almost in equilibrium with each other. So it's still legal to use this formula here because we could imagine a reversible process that was condensing the steam. Okay. 